Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. AMD just wrapped up its E3 Next Horizon event. So let's talk about some of the announcements. Now, of course, the big announcement came right at the end of the E3 uh, Next to Horizon event from AMD, and that was the announcement of the 16-core, 32-thread, 3950X. This is on the mainstream platform, which will be the X570 platform from AMD. It is a Ryzen 3000 chip, and the leak that I mentioned in my last video, uh, the slide that was leaked, is completely accurate. I'll just go ahead and throw that up here. But the clocks are accurate. It's $750, and it is coming in September. So now there's this big decision to make. If you're looking forward to Ryzen 3000 and you want the best of the best, do you get the 12 core now and then upgrade in September? Do you get the 12 core now and just be happy and ignore the 16 core? Because after all, we're talking $250 for only four extra cores. Or do you just hold off a little while longer? And that's kind of my recommendation if you already have a system that you're happy with and you want to upgrade to Ryzen 3000, but you want the best of the best, I would just hold off until September because frankly, it's a couple extra months, but then you get your full 16 cores and you don't have any sort of regret because if you're the best of the best type of person when it comes to certain hardware, then it will probably bother you a little bit not having the 16 core. But regardless, there is a decision to make. I am really glad though that we have all the information in hand now because we won't blindside people after they've already purchased the 12 core with a 16 core option. Now everyone is well aware that there's a 12 core option and there's gonna be a 16 core option. It's up to you as to which processor you're gonna pick. Now also on the Ryzen front, Lisa Su did show some comparisons between the 3900X and other Intel parts, most notably the 9900K in gaming at 1080p, which the 3900X seemed to trade some blows with the 9900K. It looked like the 9900K typically came out a little bit better, and my gut instinct here is that uh, if overclocked to its full potential of about five gigahertz, the 9900K will still be the gaming champion in pure raw FPS. But then AMD did do something that sheds some more light as to why you might want to jump for the 12 core instead, considering they're both about the same price. And that is that if you are streaming and gaming at the same time, using uh, the 3900X, it looks like you're gonna get a much better uh, quality out of your stream than you would with the 9900K, mostly because you can uh, turn that quality preset to something much slower, whereas the 9900K is unable to keep up. And then on the GPU front, we did see quite a bit from Navi. We saw the 5700 XT and the 5700 launched, or at least announced, they actually launch on July 7th as well. The 5700 XT is gonna compete against the RTX 2070, though at a significantly lower price at about $450 at launch, of course, uh, that all depends on how available they actually are at launch. But in the charts that AMD was showing, it does perform very favorable. That is the 5700 XT does perform very favorably compared to the RTX 2070. Obviously, if ray tracing is important to you though, uh, AMD is still not an option as we didn't really hear RTX mention or ray tracing rather mentioned from AMD at all. And then the 5700 was being compared to the RTX 2060, which depending on the SKU, the price of $380 at launch is actually a little bit more expensive than some of the 2060s, but that could be easily justified. At least it looks like it can be justified based on performance, the 5700 actually performed very well compared to the 2060, beating it pretty much across the board from what AMD was showing. In addition, both those cards are launching with a games bundle that it does include Gears 5, so it looks like AMD is going to give gamers a little bit more value in the form of actually giving you a game to play. And then finally, AMD did announce a software solution to actually lower input lag called Radeon Anti-Lag. And that's gonna require a lot of third-party testing that I am just not equipped whatsoever to test out. But the gist is this. Uh, the, it's a software solution to lower the input lag from the time you're actually putting an input into the computer, clicking your mouse, hitting a key on the keyboard, to the time it's actually displayed on the screen and your eyes can absorb that information. Supposedly, you're gonna be able to cut down the input lag significantly with this software solution, which if true, would give gamers playing especially esports titles a little bit of a leg up over their NVIDIA counterparts or even their older AMD cards that might not support this feature. Uh, they weren't exactly clear, but it looks like this feature is exclusive to the new line of Navi GPUs, so don't expect it on the older cards like RX 580s or anything like that. But that's a software solution that other tech tubers hopefully that are well equipped for. I'm thinking Digital Foundry will probably take into account this. Uh, hopefully Linus Tech Tips and some of those other bigger channels that are equipped to test that out actually go about and try to test that out. Because if true, again, it'd be very, uh, very nice 
for esports gamers to get that little bit of a leg up on the competition. But those are some of the big highlights from the hardware side of AMD's Next Horizon event. I do want to hear from you guys. What do you think about these hardware announcements? Let me know all your thoughts on AMD's upcoming hardware in the comments down below. And as always, if you like this video, hey, give it a like, share, subscribe, comment. All those things are helpful to the channel. You can follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.